The Nairobi Priory in Karen, is led by Prioress, Rosa Pascal, OSB, and she is in charge of the governance of the Priory. She is assisted by the Sub-Prioress, and the Cellarer. She also works with an elected council of the Seniorate, and in consultation with the chapter. Turning 50, uh, and especially for us uh, sisters, turning 40, does not mean the end. In fact, uh, there is a saying that goes that life begins at 40. So I think for us it was also something very special that at 40 we had our first uh, native prioress. And that means that we are starting another phase of life. Uh, another phase of life means that we have again to re-evaluate where we are and what are the needs of the church today in Kenya. And uh, how can, I, can we respond to those needs? Uh, life is changing, so much is changing. We need to adjust to that change and also to, be, to remain relevant. Uh, there is no time we can say that religious life is irrelevant, especially considering our rich uh, charism our rich uh, um, motto, our rich, uh, what is really Father Andreas dreamt, mission uh, in a monastic community which keeps the monastic way of life and at the same time be active and present to the people. Because we realize today that uh, everything is running very fast and I don't think it is so much appealing that people want to get that quiet time and, you know, with the draw and all that. We want to be with the friends, we want to be interacting, we want to be on the mobile, we want to be doing things. But now, our vocation now calls us, or our charism calls us back to ourselves and see what is relevant. So I think we stand a big chance uh, to evangelize today and to speak to the current situation in the church and in, in life as, as a whole, that we are highly relevant. Our ministries are still highly needed because we see how many people still come to us uh, wanting us to serve them in different ways. And we are also aligning to the needs of the country, you know, the social needs, uh, all that the people need in the country. So we look at what is there and we try to give the best. The world is calling for, you know, people are attracted to things that are done in the best way. Uh, so we are also being called not just to do things, but to do them well. Because again, that speaks that we care and we value the people we are serving and also we care for the creation that uh, uh, we, we have to take care of everything. So we are relevant. So I was talking to the abbot and I said, which plans do you have for the Jubilee? And in our chat, I told him, how about if we put ourselves into that one basket and we put our heads together and we consolidate our efforts and we have one Benedictine Golden Jubilee. And he said, that sounds like a good idea. If we put our efforts together, we can achieve so much and we can move as Benedictines in the church in Kenya and we can do best. So let us, this should be a beginning for us to, you know, to come together and uh, put our efforts together, dream together, move together, share ideas and see how far we can go. So I am just calling us back to our founders, you know, uh, main focus and also I am co calling us back to our unity as Benedictine family. So this would be my key message to the Benedictine uh, fathers and Benedictine sisters. The Prince of Peace, Benedictine Abbey T. Goni, is led by Abbot John Baptist, OSB, and is fully in charge of the entire governance of the monastery. He is assisted by the prior, sub-prior, and the cellarer. He works with an elected council of the seniorate, and in consultation with the chapter. My name is Abbot John Baptist, OSB. The Abbot of the Prince of Peace, Benedictine Abbey, Tigoni, in Kenya. Mm. 
I, I came into office as a conventional prior, at the sixth conventional prior of Tigoni on the 24th day of January in the year 2015. And I was conventional prior since then up to September 2020 when the monastery was raised to the rank of an abbey on the 21st day of September 2020. And then two days later, we had an election of the new abbot, the first and the new abbot of the abbey, which took place on the 23rd of September, the year 2020. And I was blessed as the first abbot of Tigoni on the 14th day of November 2020. First of all, the first and foremost kind of work we do is to pray. And we pray when we pray, we don't pray for ourselves as such. But our prayer is a prayer of the church and the universal prayer. that we pray for the whole world every other day, especially in our monastic order. And in the future, Tigon will not remain permanently the only monastery here in Kenya. We are thinking in the far future that some of our houses will move towards that kind of independence just like Tigon, so that we have uh, many houses in the country where young people can come for formation and establish themselves in the monastic setup. So we have plans for that kind of spiritual growth, structural growth and infrastructural growth so that uh, we don't just remain here and uh, die here without making an impact in the society. Because we are here, people come, they see how we live and uh, they ask if we can also establish elsewhere apart from here in Tigoni. So the future is bright. The future, we leave it to God. We work on it today so that we prepare for it tomorrow. And I thank God that I joined this community. And I, one of the things that I least expected and even imagined in my life is that one day I will become what I did not even know whether it existed. So as now we are here, I am the one, the brother of the house, and we look forward to the bright future of the community. And I pray that we cooperate as monks to grow our house together as one unit in the love of God and I pray that we may strengthen the bond we have at the moment so that in all things that we are doing we may acknowledge the, the, the glory of God because it is for that glory that we work. You don't work for your own glory. What should motivate us is that we should allow God to use us to help other people to be happy. As uh, I quote one friend of mine who said that the world is full of sad people and we are tired of sad people. So if we are tired of sad people, we ought to make people happy and to know that God loves them by us living in accord with our vocation and especially our monastic vocation. So that uh, at the end of the day, I am happy, you are happy, everybody is happy, then God is happy. So in all that, we give glory to God.